There's a scientist named Sebastian, and he's the star of our movie. Sebastian spent a bunch of years working really hard to create a special medicine. This medicine was like a magic potion that could make anything, even people and animals, turn invisible. But here's the twist. Sebastian couldn't figure out how to make things visible again once they disappeared. He worked on this project for a whole year, never giving up, hoping he'd find a way to fix the invisibility problem. Sebastian's determination and positive attitude kept him going, even when things got tough. That's the start of our exciting movie. All right, so Sebastian didn't give up, and after a lot of hard work, he finally cracked the code and made a potion to bring invisible stuff back to normal. But before this, he did some testing on animals, like turning them invisible and then bringing them back. Exciting news. He shared his discovery with a fellow scientist and invited them to the lab for a little experiment. They even had an invisible gorilla involved. It's like a crazy science show, isn't it? So, in their quest to turn the invisible gorilla back to visible, they first had to put the gorilla to sleep. Then they tied up its hands and feet to a bed, like it's taking a nap, and injected it with Sebastian's special medicine. But here's the exciting part. The gorilla's heart started racing like it's in a marathon, and things got pretty scary. They thought the gorilla might not make it, but they didn't give up. They shocked its heart, like giving it a little electric jumpstart. And guess what? It worked. The gorilla's heart started beating normally, and slowly but surely, it turned back to its visible self. It's like a thrilling science adventure. Successfully restoring the gorilla, Sebastian and his team were thrilled. However, they soon discover that their experiments were conducted for the military. In a tricky situation during a meeting with military officials, Sebastian tells a little lie, claiming he hasn't succeeded yet. This shocks his friends, Linda and Matthew, who question why he lied. But then Sebastian reveals his daring plan. He wants to test the potion on a human, volunteering himself. They hold another meeting, during which Sebastian lies again, saying the military approved human testing. In reality, he's testing it on himself. With Linda and Matthew's support, Sebastian goes through with it and injects himself with the potion. The poor guy experiences some serious pain, loses consciousness, and is suddenly invisible. He spends 17 hours in this invisible state, and when he finally comes to, he can't stand the light and asks to turn it off. It's like a wild roller coaster ride of science and secrecy. Once all the lights were off, Sebastian was completely invisible. They examined his body and found nothing unusual. However, people in the area felt uneasy, sensing Sebastian's presence around them. Three days passed, and it was time to make Sebastian visible again. They injected him with the medicine, but he ran into trouble. The most worrying part was that he couldn't make himself visible and he was in critical condition, close to death. They had no choice but to use a special mask to make him visible before it was too late. Sebastian was furious about this and argued with Matthew, shouting that he'd endured enough pain during those 10 days after being exposed to the light. He felt like he was the only one suffering. As he struggled with his invisibility and deteriorating mental state, he longed to escape. One day, in frustration, Sebastian left the laboratory and went directly to his house. There, he noticed his neighbor, a girl he'd been fond of for years. Sebastian decided to unmask himself and ring her doorbell. It's a moment filled with curiosity and tension. When Sebastian rang his neighbor's doorbell, there was no one to answer. So, being invisible, he entered her house. But his friend, Linda, spotted Sebastian's mask at his own house and got scared. She hurried back to the laboratory and gathered her colleagues for a meeting. During the meeting, they discussed the risk of Sebastian wandering around without his mask while invisible. Just as they were talking about it, Sebastian himself approached the meeting. Linda warned him, saying she'd report his actions to the military if he did it again. Sebastian reluctantly agreed to follow the rules, but there was still an air of unease among them. It's like a suspenseful drama unfolding, to keep an eye on Sebastian, they had a camera in the lab that could see him even when he was invisible. But Sebastian was onto this, so he couldn't just leave. Here's the cool part. Sebastian figured out a sneaky trick. He played an old video and messed with the camera to make everyone think he was still in the lab. Sneaky, right? Then he made his way to Linda's place. 
but guess what? He stumbled upon some drama. Linda and Matthew were having a secret thing going on. Sebastian, being all emotional about Linda, got really mad and broke one of her windows in a burst of anger. Linda, hearing the commotion, thought it might be Sebastian. So she called the lab to check, and someone there said Sebastian was right there. But there was a twist. They didn't realize it was an old recording playing in the background. Drama and suspense are in the air. Sebastian decided to lay low on his bed, making everyone believe he was still in the lab, but he'd already left. When they returned, he was furious. Unfortunately, he took out his anger on a dog and killed it. The next day, the vet found the dead dog when she came to feed the animals. She confronted Sebastian, asking if he was responsible, but he played innocent, saying he had no idea. The vet checked all the video recordings, but nothing seemed to point to him. But the story takes another twist. Sebastian paid another visit to Linda's house at night. And Linda had a strong feeling that he was there, making her pretty suspicious. The suspense just keeps building. Linda was pretty convinced that someone was at her house, so she decided to check things out. She headed to the lab and found out that Sebastian had been messing with their plans. He wasn't around. Linda thought it was time to spill the beans, so she and Matthew went to their senior doctor. They spilled the whole story to him, and he was for use. He kicked Linda and Matthew off the project. As the senior doctor was about to share this with the rest of the team, the phone mysteriously stopped working. In the meantime, Sebastian arrived, and, in a shocking turn of events, killed the senior doctor by drowning him. The next morning, Sebastian showed up at the lab again, and Linda and Matthew were expecting a call from the senior doctor for their meeting. But no call came because, well, the senior doctor was no longer among the living. The plot thickens even more. Linda was getting increasingly concerned. She called the senior doctor to find out what was happening, only to learn that he had died from drowning. With this shocking revelation, Linda decided it was time to spill the beans about the whole project. You see, only the people in the lab knew about Sebastian's invisibility. Everyone else was in the dark. But when she tried to call, his phone was also unresponsive. They decided to leave the lab, but the doors wouldn't budge. Sebastian had deactivated the door locks, and only his code could open them. So, they resolved to capture Sebastian, who was still inside the lab. But as they tried to confront him, Sebastian took a dark turn and killed one of the girls who had returned to the lab to retrieve something. The suspense keeps building, and the plot takes an even darker twist. They were fully aware that Sebastian would stop at nothing to keep his invisibility a secret. He was determined to eliminate them one by one. Using a device in the lab, they tracked Sebastian's location and sent two people, Matthew and his friend, to capture him. Unfortunately, Sebastian injured Matthew's friend. When Matthew fired his gun at Sebastian, it had no effect. Instead, Sebastian's form was revealed, and he made a quick escape. Matthew's friend had lost a lot of blood, so they desperately needed a transfusion for him. Linda's friend went to arrange for blood, but that's when Sebastian struck again. He killed Linda's friend, and at the same time, Matthew's friend also met a grim fate. The tension and danger were mounting as Sebastian continued his ruthless pursuit to protect his secret. Now only Linda, Matthew, and one friend were left. They searched for the missing friend, and sadly found her dead in the cold room. Tragedy struck again when Sebastian used an iron rod to kill the third survivor. He even injured Matthew. In a chilling move, Sebastian trapped Linda and Matthew in a freezing room and left them to freeze to death. The danger was growing as the temperature dropped. Linda bravely attempted to open the door, but her efforts were in vain. Meanwhile, Matthew was unconscious due to his injuries. At the same time, Sebastian was preparing for something sinister. He created a bomb using chemicals, set its timer, and left. On the other side, Linda was struggling to unlock the door using an electromagnet. Just when it seemed impossible, she succeeded and unlocked the door. She got Matthew out, but he was in bad shape, his body frozen from the cold. Undeterred, Linda headed towards where Sebastian was. She found him in an elevator. The tension was rising as their final confrontation approached. Linda arrived just in time as the elevator doors were closing. She had a flamethrower, and she used it to set Sebastian on fire. He was engulfed in flames, his body slowly burning. Sebastian, aggressive and wounded, sought revenge against Linda. He was determined to finish her in any way he could. But Linda had a plan of her own, 
She turned on the extinguisher, and water cascaded down, dousing the flames. Now, Sebastian was partially visible, and he continued his brutal assault on Linda. He even tried to choke her, pressing his foot against her neck. However, just as Linda was on the brink of defeat, Matthew arrived with an iron rod. He swung it at Sebastian's head, and the tide began to turn. Sebastian fell to the ground, and Matthew helped Linda to her feet. They started to make their way out, but Sebastian, though badly injured, managed to grab the iron rod, ready to strike Matthew. However, in a twist of fate, as they struggled, the rod made contact with an electric cable, delivering a powerful shock to Sebastian. He was instantly knocked out and fell to the ground. With little time left, Matthew and Linda rushed to the place where Sebastian had set the bomb. They realized they couldn't defuse it, and they couldn't escape through the elevator either. The tension was skyrocketing as they faced an imminent explosion and an uncertain fate. Sebastian had cunningly deactivated the elevator, leaving them no choice but to climb the ladder. As they ascended, the bomb exploded, intensifying the peril of their situation. In a last-ditch effort to thwart their escape, Sebastian, still alive, reached for Linda's foot as they climbed. Matthew rushed to her rescue, but Sebastian managed to get into the elevator with Linda just before Matthew could reach them. Linda, in the elevator, clung to a cable that controlled its movement, the same cable that allowed the elevator to move up and down. The suspense was reaching its peak as they faced this life-or-death struggle. In a brilliant move, Linda used her foot to press a button, disconnecting the cable that controlled the elevator. Sebastian was left in the falling elevator, and as it descended, the explosion below created a deadly fire. Sebastian met his demise as he burned to death. With Sebastian gone, Linda cautiously made her way to Matthew. Both had survived the challenge, and were filled with relief and excitement. The movie ended with this thrilling and suspenseful climax, 